Hello, welcome to the topic of cardiology. We shall be talking about atrial fibrillation today. Now, atrial fibrillation is one of the most common arrhythmias that we find clinically in patients. And today I'm going to show you the pathophysiology that causes atrial fibrillation. And we're going to talk about what you look for on EKGs so that you can be able to recognize this. And we're going to end up with a case, okay? So the first thing we want to talk about is what is atrial fibrillation? definition. Well, in order to be able to actually talk about what atrial fibrillation means, let's break the word into two. Something is happening in the atrium and it's fibrillating. Hmm, fibrillating. Well, we'll find out at the end of this lecture. So, I'm going to just say it's a fibrillating or quivering atrium. What does that mean? Well, Let's draw out the structure of a heart and see what actually happens inside the human heart. So here's our heart, right? And we've got, let's see here. There we go. Very good. So inside the heart, we know we've got two atriums. We've got the left atrium and the right atrium. We've got the ventricles and right there we go. So we've got the atrium right here. Right atrium, the left atrium. Well in order for the heart to work, remember the heart is just a pump. It's a pump with wires, electrical wires surrounding it. So what happens is like turning on your car, you turn it on with the key, there's a you know ignition, you turn it on, you start it up, the electric system gets activated, it tells the muscles to squeeze, and we're pumping blood around the body. Well, that's a simple analogy. Let's see where that is happening inside a human heart. Well, in the heart, we've got a node sitting up right in the right atrium. Notice that the SA node, all right? So the SA node normally fires, and when it fires, it causes depolarization of the muscles. And this depolarization is going to affect the atrium. When the atrium gets depolarized, they squeeze, right? That's called atrial contraction. Very easy, right? It's a nice rhythm when the, the SA node fires, the atrium is supposed to undergo atrial contraction, which makes sense, right? The atrium gets the action potential fired across it, it's, then the muscles get depolarized and they squeeze. But in the, the, the way it works is the atrium squeezes at the same time, like it's a nice rhythm, it squeezes. And when they squeeze, blood trickles down easily. When the, the valves are going to open up, right, we've got, got the tricuspid valve and the mitral valve here and the blood trickles down into the ventricles. Now right at the junction here is the AV node. The AV node is going to get the depolarization also and fight under his bundle going down the left and the right, right? The right bundle and the left bundle and eventually to the Purkinje fibers and then the ventricles are going to depolarize while the ventricles are depolarizing getting the action potential firing down right they're receiving blood and the atrium squeezes that little extra blood into the ventricles so that it goes from the ventricle canal once they depolarize they squeeze up the blood and goes into the aorta right and the aorta gets the blood to the rest of the body to the brain to the kidneys and the organs that's good, right? So what happens in atrial fibrillation? Well, this is how I'm going to tell you a story about atrial fibrillation. Did you notice there's only one node known as the sinoatrial node? Sinus, right? Atrial node. Only find one inside the atrium. Well, unfortunately, when you have atrial fibrillation, people get mad. 
They don't want to have one leader. They say, oh, you know, why is it always has to be the SA node firing all the time? You know, why can't I be the guy firing? So all of a sudden, there's this other extra guys popping up, trying to be a node also. I'm like, really? This is a whacked out conspiracy. No, 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 don't do that. Why, why you? Well, before we go ahead, look, now we've got multiple different ectopic focuses inside the atrium and everybody wants to fire. Well, normally, this is what happens. When the atrium fires, right, when the SA node fires, and you look at your electrocardiogram, you see a P wave, right? A P wave means all this atrium as depolarized. It just means atrial depolarization. And then once the atrium depolarizes, then the ventricle depolarizes and you see a QRS, right? But remember what, what while the ventricle is depolarizing, the atrium has to repolarize so it gets buried in the QRS complex. So we see a P wave, right? Beautiful, nice upward P wave, right? And then once the ventricles repolarize, we get a T wave. So we get QRS complexes, right? And that's beautiful, P, Q, R, S, T. We made it very easy in medicine. But how do we recognize when a patient has atrial fibrillation on an electrocardiogram? Check this out. Now, normally the reason why we have this beautiful P wave means we've got a sinus rhythm, right? We've got an SA node that's firing and all the atrium are depolarizing and contracting together. But guess what? Now we've had multiple ectopic focuses in atrial fibrillation. What happens is now there's different guys shooting fireworks in the atmosphere, right? So think about it. Go out night at night and see a lot of fireworks. Well, all this there's only supposed to be one firework. There's so many fireworks, and now the atrium is like, who should we listen to? I don't know. Shall I listen to each other? And now there's confusion in the atrium. It's like a nasty war. And what happens is the atrium starts to quiver. It starts to quiver because rather than having depolarization and contraction, depolarization, contraction, the atrium is like, we've got so many of you guys. We, we, we don't know. Should we listen to the boss? Should we listen to this guy? And then the atrium starts to quiver, right? It starts to dance. I call it a dancing atrium. You might think that is cool. No, it's not cool because your cardiac output a little bit of your cardiac output depends on the extra blood that's squeezed during the at during atrial contraction into the ventricles to get the blood to the rest of your body. So what eventually happens in atrial fibrillation is the vent atrium doesn't contract well and there's stasis of blood at the end of ventricular relaxation. When the ventricles relax and they're waiting, they're waiting for that little drop of blood left and the atrium is like, hmm, who should we do? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe we should keep this blood. Well, then the blood starts to sit into the atrium. That is called stasis, right? So now we don't have atrial contraction. We have blood stasis, secondary to atrial quivering. Now, this is not good for the body because we, that means the body is not getting the full maximum cardiac output from the heart because it's a little bit of blood getting left out behind inside the atrium. Now you're probably wondering, what can cause this to happen? Well, let's go over it. the causes of atrial fibrillation. And once we cause, talk about causes of atrial fibrillation, then we'll be able to show you what it looks like in an electrocardiogram. So causes, the mnemonic for atrial fibrillations is caused by the pirates, the pirates, the pirates are coming in, and once the pirates come in, they are the one that's causing the problem. Well, the mnemonic stands for pulmonary, and the pulmonary means patients that have pulmonary embolism, pulmonary embolism. Well, if patients develop pulmonary embolism, how can they develop atrial fibrillation. Well, the problem is, if you have a saddle embolus that comes and sits over here inside the pulmonary arteries, inside the pulmonary arteries, 
Unfortunately, this patient, when the heart is trying to contract and gets a big pulmonary PE, the, vent the ventricles cannot get blood out, so you get increased ventricular and diastolic pressure, which is going to transmit into the atrium. The atrium is very thin. It doesn't like to be touched. They like to be sexy. They don't want to be touched. But the problem is, once they get stretched out to the limit, oh, that can cause the atrial muscles not to be functioning well. So these patients can develop atrial fibrillation. So you should see that right in there, these patients, once the atrium stretches out, like, oh, take a little yawn. Oh, now they can't contract very well. Okay? It's like getting stretch marks. All right? Also, what other pulmonary diseases can cause atrial fibrillation? COPD. COPD. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder. Patients with COPD develop a lot of hypoxic vasoconstriction in their lungs, which increase pulmonary pressures and also causes this patient. Hey, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you learned a lot. Are you studying for the USMLE Step 1 or Step 2? Are you studying for the NCLEX or you're currently in nursing school as a nursing student? Are you a PA student currently in school or studying for your PANS exam? Or are you a nurse practitioner student or trying to take your MP board exam? Listen, I've got super awesome content for you. If you truly love this video and it simplified your learning process, I want you to check out my website below. I've listed all the list of exams, whether you're studying for any of this board exam, and all I want you to do is click on the link right now below so that you can take you directly to my website. For USMLE, just go to smashusmle.com. For NCLEX, go to crushnclex.com. And if you're studying for the PANS exam, the nurse pr practitioner exam, or you're studying for your internal medicine board exam, just click below and take you directly to ftplectures.com. Listen, I can't wait to help you. If you need to get in touch with me, just get to my website. You're able to reach me directly and we can work together one-on-one. -on -one. Listen, you are super awesome and my goal here is to help your dream come true. If you want to be a doctor, want to be a nurse practitioner, a registered nurse or physician assistant, I'm here to help you get to that next level. With your medical knowledge, let's save the world together. I love you guys. You guys are super awesome and do not forget to click on the link below to be able to get to my website. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You guys have a great day. Let's go.